Goose wisdom, what's that about? People ask me about that all week. What's that about? Or trying to guess what it's about anyways. Goose wisdom. Well, as a Canadian, uh, living and working in the United States for many years. And of course, Lisa and I became American citizens many, many years ago, but you know, the majority of our life, and of course we were born in Canada. And especially at the beginning, when we first moved here, <clears throat> it was unusual. Oh, where are you from? You know, uh, Tennessee, you from uh, Michigan? No, we're from Canada. Oh, you're from Canada. You know, it was a, a point of interest there. And because of this, through no effort or solicitation of my own, uh, for some reason or other, I became the resident expert in Canadian affairs for whatever American congregation I was preaching for at a time. You know, if something was going on in Canada, oh, I'd go ask Mike, he's from Canada. He knows what's going on there. So, for example, when the weather grew cold, and the north wind picked up you know, from Canada uh, and blew south, I, I was called upon to take the blame and uh, provide apologies for the Canadian weather being dumped on the usually sunny and warm southwestern states. Um, I can also remember, here's a memory for you. Remember these guys? I can also remember when the Central Hockey League started up a franchise here in Oklahoma City uh, with the Oklahoma City Blazers, great team. And uh, through a you know, variety of circumstances, I not only became the only person in town who could explain what icing was. Nobody knew what icing was. You know, they'd blow the whistle because of icing, but no one knew what that was. And I would be called upon to, uh, to explain that. And even more bizarre, uh, I was even asked to go to the arena and uh, sing the, national, the Canadian national anthem for uh, the opening game because they were, Blazers were playing a team from Canada. Well, I want to tell you, you know, uh, first problem, no voice. Uh, second problem, I didn't know the words to the Canadian <laughs> anthem. And, and it's in two languages. We only show the English here, but the real anthem, when they sing it in Canada anyways, they, they sing part of it in English, then part of it in French, and they go back into English. So I, I, was not the, uh, I was not the guy for that job. I declined the offer. But again, that didn't put an end to my hockey career. I was, uh, I was, uh, I was brought in to coach a junior roller hockey team you know, between ages 15 to 17. Uh, and my only credentials for this uh, task uh, was that I was from Canada. Uh, we had a parents meeting, you know, uh, sign up your kid and hear the rules and pay your fees. And, uh, and uh, all of a sudden somebody said, hey, wait a minute, that guy, he's from Canada. Well, let's, let's make him the coach. Okay, you know. Uh, the Canadian blood uh, must have done something because uh, we won the, uh, the city and the state championship uh, that year. Go Bulldogs, uh, thanks, to, uh, thanks to Paul actually, he was a pretty good player. Now there are other things about Canada that helped me not only in my life here in the United States, but also helped me in my work as a minister. And a good example of this were the peculiar habits of the Canada goose. The Canada goose. Now, Lisa and I and the kids, we used to live in Midwest City um, and there were two, you know, there are two small lakes there in that housing, Oakwood East, I think, right? There are two small little ponds or lakes there and uh, a, a jogging track that goes around and we lived in that, uh, in that addition. And in the early fall, a flock of these Canada geese would show up to spend the winter enjoying the mild climate uh, and sharing the water with the local ducks. Now, these birds uh, look like uh, just any other bird landing uh, you know, on the pond for the, for the winter uh, to take advantage of the warm air here. However, I found out uh, that uh, scientists have studied these particular creatures 
and they have discovered a certain goose wisdom that is biblical in nature and could be very helpful to people in teaching them how to better get along with other people in and out of the church. So I would like to share some of this goose wisdom with you this evening. Uh, first of all, they observed that Canadian geese uh, fly in a V formation. They learned that uh, each bird flapping its wings in this V formation created an uplift for the bird immediately behind it. And so by flying in this V formation, the flock added at least 71% greater flying range than if a bird tried to fly the same route by himself. And so the biblical parallel to this is found in Acts chapter 2, 44 and 47. And it says, and all those who had believed were together and they had all things in common. And then in verse 47, it says, they were praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord was adding to the number day by day those who were being saved. The idea here is that people who share a common direction and a sense of community can get to where they are going much more quickly and easily because they are traveling on the thrust and the uplift of one another. And they're not just trying to go it alone. And so in a family or in a business as well as in the church, when we work together, we can get to where we're going much faster and much more easily. Uh, a second goose wisdom that they observed is that geese stay with the flock. Uh, when a goose falls out of formation, decides, you know what, this is a drag here flying in this uh, V formation, I think I'm just going to take off by myself and you know, uh, go it alone. And they fall out of formation, they quickly find that uh, they slow down. <laughs> you know, the, the flock, it, it just keeps on going. And uh, without the, the lift created by the flock, they kind of slow down. And so it quickly gets back into formation to take advantage of the lift created by the birds in front of it. Well, what's the biblical parallel here? Biblical parallel in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul says, for even as the body is one and yet has many members and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body and also in Christ. People with as much sense as a goose understand that there is strength in unity and greater security in remaining within the body. In the church, we need to understand that remaining in the body of Christ is actually a matter of salvation. You, 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 you can't be connected to the head of the body unless you're connected to the body in one way or another. A third uh, goose wisdom is that geese share the work. When the lead goose, because you know, in a V formation, there's somebody in front there, when the, when, when the lead goose gets tired, he rotates back into the wing and another goose flies in the point position. Again, what's the biblical parallel? Ephesians 4.16 says, from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth, and I would add the movement, of the body for the building up of itself in love. Notice, it's the building up of itself for the purpose of love, not, not just for the purpose of growth, Everybody wants growth. You know, I never heard anybody say, you know, I want our church to shrink. I'd really be, I'd really be happy if we just chopped off you know, 20, 30 people, you know, because we're just getting too big. No, everybody wants the church to grow. But we forget 
that the Bible says, does not say anywhere anything about, you know, hurry up and grow in size. It's, it's always exhorting us to grow in love because if we grow in love, we'll grow in size. That'll just be a byproduct. You can't reach your destination or your goal unless everybody does their share of the work. In, in church work, as well as family work, you can't just think of yourself. You can't just think of your own little world or your own little turf. You have to take turns doing the hard work. You have to be willing to sacrifice so the entire flock, whether it be the Lord's flock or the flock of geese or the flock of your family, you have to be willing to work hard and do your part so uh, everyone can arrive at the goal. For geese, it's usually you know, further south or further north. Number four in the goose wisdom literature, geese encourage each other. Isn't that interesting? The geese that are flying at the back honk their encouragement to the ones up front so that they'll keep up their speed. You know, you look up at the, at the geese flying by and they're honk, 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 you know, and you're wondering, who are they honking at? You know, there's no traffic up there. Well, they're honking encouragement to the leader. Keep going, you're doing a good job. Biblical parallel, there are many, but. Biblical encouragement, Hebrews chapter three, verse 13, but encourage one another day after day. It's a little, a little passage, you know, that it's so easy to kind of just slip on by, just read right through, it's not important, can't build a sermon on that, but oh, so very important. Encourage one another day after day, why? Well, because there's things like COVID, that's why. Because there's things like my business has to close down. There's things like the check I'm waiting in the mail from the government has not arrived yet. There's things like, uh, I don't know, my husband passed away. Or my child is in trouble or taking drugs. I don't know. There's all kinds of reasons to give and to need encouragement every single day. And so geese are smart enough to keep their leaders motivated so that the entire formation can move ahead. Next slide. They know that if they try to undermine the leadership, they will cause the destruction of the entire flock. You know, a lesson that shouldn't be lost on those who see criticism as their only contribution to their family or to their uh, church. Uh, some people think their ministry in the church is to criticize what's going on. What's your ministry? Do you clean up? Do you, do you swab the deck in the bathroom? Or do you sweep? Do you mop? Or do you visit the sick? Or do you call people to encourage them? No, 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 no. My ministry is to criticize what I see is wrong. Uh, my, my, my job is to make sure I point out to everybody uh, you know, what's not being done correctly. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not a ministry. You know, I'll tell you something. As a preacher, I, I, I've also worked as other things for many years and the hardest thing to learn as an employee or a, an assistant manager or a middle manager or a preacher or whatever, the, the hardest thing to learn is the word no. <laughs> the word no. In, for example, no, you can't do that. Or no, you know your plan? Yeah, we're not going to use your plan or no, we're not going to permit you to do this thing. Whoever is telling you no, your boss, your supervisor, your elder, your, your, your father, your uncle, whatever, the manager of the shop, until you learn how to accept no and move on, 
positively, you know, and constructively, you'll never grow. You'll never move forward either. It's one of life's basic lessons, learning how to react to the word no, and reacting to it in a positive way. And then finally, one other goose wisdom here, uh, geese look out for one another. Uh, when a goose gets sick or wounded and falls out of formation, one and sometimes two geese will also fall out with him and follow that sick goose in order to protect him. And they'll stay with the fallen bird until he is able to fly again or he dies. Then they'll launch out and try to catch up with their assigned group. Well, what is the biblical parallel? In Ecclesiastes chapter four, verses nine to 12, the writer says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion, but woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together, they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him, and a cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. We should care for those who are down. Excuse the pun if you just saw it. You know, I would tell uh, our children when they were at home, <clears throat> and you have four children who are about five years apart, one thing is sure, arguments. Yes, there will be arguments, there will be stress, there will be hair pulling, they'll be wrestling around. There'll be disagreements. There'll be nasty words said to, to one another. And uh, in my effort to make peace, uh, when we would have a little talk you know, uh, with dad because of the argument or the fight that so-and-so had with so-and-so in the family, my encouragement to them was always the same. We're family. Your brother and your sister they're your blood, they're your family. They're the ones, you know, as you grow up, maybe you don't realize it now, you're 12, you're 14, but as you grow up, you're going to find out that your family's the one that's got your back. Your family's going to be the one that'll let you, you know, sleep on the couch when you, you quit your job in a, in, a, in a moment of anger. Your family is going to be there when other people are not there. Don't, don't, don't be beating up your family. You, you're going to need your family. And you're going to go out into the world, and believe me, there are enough people out in the world ready to beat you up. <laughs> you need to make sure that you're on good terms with your family. The natural impulse, of course, is to discard or to disown or to disparage those that are having problems. But even the geese teach us that every member of the flock is important and we need to take care of one another, especially if you're in a family, a natural family, or you're in the family of God, because you know what? We're blood too. We're, we're bound by the blood of Jesus. That's our bond. We have to take care of one another because there's plenty of people out there, disbelievers, who are ready to beat us up. We need each other. We, we don't need to hurt each other. We can learn a lot from the Canada goose. We learn in summary, it is wise to work together it is wise to stick together. It is wise to do our share of the work. It is wise to honk a word of encouragement. And it is wise to watch out for one another. Well, I add one other bit of goose wisdom that pertains to all. And that is, geese don't procrastinate. You know, they always leave in plenty of time to make it south for the winter. 
What's the biblical parallel here? Well, Acts 22, 16, Ananias says to Saul, and now why do you delay? Why do you procrastinate? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. If geese delay, they freeze to death. If people uh, in doing right or serving God delay, they may lose their chance forever. So don't delay in doing what is needed, physically, emotionally, or spiritually. So when you see the V flying overhead, remember the goose wisdom that God has given us through them. I pray that uh, God uh, bless you in this uh, goose wisdom. And my invitation, of course, is if you need a prayer, uh, or if you need to repent or become a Christian, or if you want to rejoin the flock, so to speak, you've been flying solo, then there's enough of us here to pray for you. There's several elders that will be happy to counsel you, and certainly all of us are ready to witness your confession of faith and baptism, if that is the case. Whatever your need, we encourage you to come forward now as uh, Titus comes running forward to uh, lead us in our song of invitation. Shall we stand, please?